Welcome to this Q&A. It's going to be a Q&A about anything. I posted on Instagram a story asking anyone to ask their questions about print on demand, business, life, whatever it may be. And I've got a whole bunch of questions that I want to answer here on my phone right now. But before I do, let me just say if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you know when I bring out new videos. And let me get right into it with quite a quite an interesting question. What do you sell? What is your strategy? What are your suppliers? Well, that's quite personal now, isn't it? No, so um, what do you sell? It depends on what business you're talking about. If you're talking about Amazon FBA, we mainly sell knee braces. We also sell sports socks and mouth guards. And what's our strategy? Well, our strategy is we have a, we have a big strategy when it comes to finding products for Amazon. And it's the product has to meet certain criteria for, it, for, it, for us to want to go into it. Because if it meets all these certain criteria, it shows that it's going to have potential profits that are good, it's going to get demand that's going to be good, the competition's not going to be so hard. So that's very important. And what are your suppliers? Well, I mean, that just is random because j just go to Alibaba, there's tons of suppliers there, that doesn't make a difference. Right, let's say, uh, please share your journey of doing business in detail. Um, okay, well, I'm not going to do it in detail because this is a quick Q&A here, but I could make a separate video on this. But I'll just quickly start with, throughout high school, I sold um, iPhones and I used to line up at the Apple store and get tons of iPhones. I used to sell food in school. I used to sell on eBay a lot. And then um, but just as after I left school, I started selling t-shirts. And then as soon after that, I went on Fiverr for a bit um, just to see what, right, just to try that out. And soon after that, I went on to Amazon FBA, started selling Amazon FBA. And now I've, I do YouTube, I do our courses, I do affiliate marketing, I do Amazon FBA. And I dabble a bit in print on demand if there is time. What we have good items and good prices as well, but efforts in marketing, but still low customers. Well, if you have good items and good prices, maybe it's your marketing that needs to be just a bit better. Maybe you're targeting the wrong audience. Maybe your prices aren't actually that good. Who's determining if your prices and products are good? Right? Surely it's that the customers. So what I would suggest to do is maybe survey your customers and ask them what they think. Ask them if they found that it was it was worthwhile for the price, if they think the item is good quality, and that's how you can get your answer. You can't personally answer that question yourself because you would be biased as it's your product. Um, all right, next question. I wanna try and keep this video around 10 minutes. Can I start well, can I start well income business with perfumes? I have no idea. I have no idea. I've never looked into the perfume business um, whenever I buy a perfume, it's generally branded, like a cologne, not really perfume. Um, I would assume most people would also buy brand perfume. It just makes the most sense. So I, I don't know. That's, I'm sorry. How's the tax side of things when it comes to print on demand? It's a good question, actually. Well, the tax side of things is like any other business you do. It does obviously make a massive difference if you're selling prim primarily predominantly in the US or other countries because that will affect your tax in a big way. But um, if you're talking about corporation tax, personal tax, all those kind of things, it depends if you're doing it with a limited company here in the UK or an LLC in the US. If you're doing it with a limited company in the UK, you, your company gets paid, then you will pay yourself from the company and you will pay tax on the profits that the company has and then you'll also pay to personal tax. If it's over the threshold, I think it's 11,000 and something. I don't know off the top of my head how much it is. But if you don't give yourself a salary over the threshold, you can avoid paying personal tax entirely and just pay corporation tax. Okay. Hello, my name is Trey. I sent you a DM with some questions. Okay. I will check those out later. This guy just left a blank space. Nice. Um, two part of giving an opinion of print on demand designs. I've, oh, make a second part. Well, I've done a second part and a third part now. I bring them out. My print on demand critique videos. Are your designs any good? Introducing, are your designs any good with Shimmy Morris? That is the song. Um, <laughs> I love that intro. Um, I do videos for that every Saturday at 5 p.m. UK time. So if you're interested, you can go and watch those. Your Instagram is growing fast. Are you sponsoring or is this organic growth? Great question. This is actually sponsored post with a bit of organic. So I started with just um, organic. It was taking a long time. So I started doing, testing out different influencers and doing sponsored posts and paying a certain amount 
been tr testing them all out because I actually want to make a YouTube video, not like a documentary, but a YouTube video on sponsoring in, uh, on sponsoring posts for Instagram, seeing which ones do well. So my Instagram channel is actually a lot of it is sponsored in terms of other people are making posts and I'm in the description doing shout they're shouting me out. But because I've done it a bit now, I'm getting a lot more organic followers every single day and it's showing out. To, it's showing to be quite well. Right, I think the same guy has left another empty question. Interesting. All right, hey Shimmy, teach us how to work with Amazon. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, there are tons and tons of videos on Amazon FBA. I've got an entire, I think it's over an hour long tutorial on my YouTube, it's on the main YouTube page for my channel. Um, if I, I'll put it up here if I remember to do that in the edit. But it teaches you everything about Amazon and it's really, really detailed, so go check that out. Um, budget needed to start Amazon FBA. Great question. Well, if you're in the UK, I recommend about a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds, and that's with fifteen hundred pounds is with buying a course because that gives you about eight hundred to nine hundred pounds left over, or maybe about a thousand pounds left over. And then, if you're in the US, I would say you know fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars again with buying a course. If you don't want to buy a course, then you're okay to start with a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds, and you should be absolutely fine. The only annoying thing is you're going to have to find all the information out through YouTube and you know other areas, and it's not going to be just guided step-by-step -step information. So I personally think guided information is the best way to go. And I've done that with everything. When I started YouTube, I took a course. When I started um, T-shirts, I did a course. When I did Amazon, I did a course. I always like taking courses because it's 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 focused information in like bite-sized form that I can just, you know, I can just watch and learn straight away without having to search and find this and see what order everything has to be done in and all of that kind of stuff. It's just done for you and you just have to watch and learn. It's like, imagine imagine going to school Right, and the teacher's like, well, here's the book, right? Here's the textbook, go figure it out. You'd be like, what? What? No, you need the teacher to go through the textbook with you, you know, and, and explain things as you go along. So that's what I think of a course. Okay, have you, have how you see yourself after 20 years? Are you planning to have a big company that competes with the big companies? 20 years is a long time. Hmm. I'll be, how old will I be? I'll be 35, no, 45. I'll be 45 in 20 years. Whew, 45. Um, how do I see myself? I see myself having lots of cars. I like cars. I see myself living in a bigger house. Um, in terms of business, um, yes, I see myself owning a company big enough to hopefully sell. Um, hopefully this YouTube channel would have reached a million subscribers, but I can only do that if you subscribe, so there's that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's impossible to say because I've only been in business for eight years and 20 years is, is nearly as long as I've been alive. So I could have a brand new business. I would love to start some sort of car business. So hopefully I would have started that by then. Um, I would love this YouTube channel to have properly taken off. Um, Amazon, right? Amazon, I would have assumed I, I would probably would have sold by then my Amazon business or just grown it to a, a degree where I'm literally just employing other people to do that. And then another big thing in 20 years time, I would like to have started property already, buying, selling, flipping properties and doing property development because I absolutely love the idea of, you know, buying rundown houses and doing them up and selling them or renting them, whatever it may be. So hopefully that will happen in the next 20 years. Right. What kind of designs work in quarter four? I have no idea. You've got to do a bit of research there. Um, what I would say is quarter four around Christmas time, do the ugly sweaters. So, you know, the ugly Christmas sweaters, they look a bit like this. Right, you can do that with any niche, any theme. I've done it with, uh, I've done it with um, Father's Day. I've done it with, um, just like for fathers, I've done it with nurses. I've done it with bartenders. So just literally stick your design on an ugly sweater design, and you're good to go. It should, it should sell well, especially during Christmas. How to make money if you can't change job for a, for a, for a year and job timings are not fixed? Oh, that's a good question actually, because you can't really plan your time. You can't really plan your day if you don't know when you're working during that day. So I would say if you can set aside one hour a day to work on your side hustle, to work on, you know, whatever it may be, an hour a day is quite a long time. If you look at how many hours you actually have in a day, including the job that you're doing, right? So you wake up at, I don't know, eight, okay? And you go to bed at 10, 
you've got yourself a solid amount of hours there, and I'm not gonna start working them out because I'm just gonna embarrass myself with the math, but you've got yourself a solid amount of hours there, right? You've got enough hours in the day to do the job, even if it's last minute, and you've got enough hours in the day to do your side hustle. What I would say is, because you can't really plan what you're going to be doing that day because your job doesn't have fixed hours, write a long list of things that need to be done for your side hustle. So if it's t-shirts, write a long list of things that need to be done, and during the day, if you find that you have, oh, I have an hour today or I have a two hours today, just work off that list until that list is finished and then like update the list and make a new list and do it like that. And that way you don't, you're never thinking during the day, oh, what should I do now? I've got an hour spare. What can I do in an hour? You don't think like that. You just look at the list. You're like, oh, create three designs. Okay, I'll go and, I'll go and do that today. Right, very, very simple. And that's kind of a way to build up your side hustle. It could take a long, long time to build up your side hustle, but that's a way to do it. Then you can eventually quit your job if you want to do that. Check out my store and give me advice. No, um, I'm not doing stores at the moment. It's way too time consuming. Hopefully, maybe eventually I will review stores, but not, not at the moment. Right, how to find the best manufacturers for starting any business? That's an interesting question, I like that. Well, I mean, it depends on the business. If your business is physical products, I think Alibaba is brilliant for finding or suppliers and manufacturers. I think it's really, really good, and you've got the, they operate in so many different countries. So again, if you're starting Amazon, I think that's a great idea. If you're starting something like a t-shirt business, then well, you just got to choose. You got to choose which is the best put on demand company for you, really. Um, but yeah, it totally depends on the type of business that you're going to go into on how you find manufacturers. It's been one of the businesses that I've done. It's selling on Amazon. One of the products that we've done, um, we found manufacturers in the UK because it was actually cheaper to source this product in the UK. It was it was like a range of socks. It's cheaper to source it in the UK than it was actually to source it in China because of the shipping and the custom fees. So it depends on the product and the business. How long does it take to start making a profit on Amazon FBA? I'm loving the amount of Amazon FBA questions here. This is so cool. I like that you guys are asking me Amazon FBA questions. Um, how long does it take to start making a profit on Amazon FBA? Well, I like the timeline of three months. This is the last question, by the way, because I'll do a part two, I think. If everyone wants to let me know in the comments down below, maybe next Sunday I'll do a part two. I didn't want to keep this video going on for too long. But let me just quickly answer this question. I always tell people around three months, that's how long it took us, that's how long it takes most of our students, and in my mind, it makes the most sense because it, you have a good month to find a product, you have a good month to sort, like, to get the product sent to you, and then you have a good month to start getting sales, so that by month four, you're actually, you know, profiting, you're actually making money every single month off your product, and then you restock, so I always like to say three months is a good amount of time, but it could take longer, I don't see it taking shorter than three months. All right, I'm going to leave it at that and I'm going to actually do a part two, but let me know if you want to actually see a part two. If you don't want to see it, then I won't do a part two. But I want to say thank you so much for watching this Q&A. It was a great video. I love getting Q&As. If you like seeing Q&As more often, like I love doing Q&As because the one reason I made this YouTube channel is so that I could help you and answer your questions. So Q&As are the best way to do that because rather than me make a video and assume that's what you want to see, a Q&A is literally what you want to see because you've asked the question. Um, so I absolutely love doing a Q&A and if you want to get involved in the Q&A and actually ask your questions, go and check out my Instagram channel at shimmymorris1. That is where I generally post on my story saying I'm doing a Q&A, ask your questions and that's where questions get submitted. So if you do want to, you know, ask me questions, that's the best place to do it. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I will see you in Tuesday's video.